Greetings and salutations, my fellow math enthusiasts and students of all things mathematical. My name is Sean Spartan, and this video will be about a topic in algebra called group theory. One of the first persons to study group theory was the mathematician Everest Galois, who was kind of a tragic figure in mathematics. He died at the age of 20 from wounds he received in a duel. But even though he died so young, he made significant contributions to the field of abstract algebra. Okay, so first things first. As always, let's start by defining our terms. A group is a mathematical object consisting of a set of elements that I'll call G, and a group operation that I'll call addition that satisfies certain properties. We call these properties the group axioms, and there are four. Closure, associativity, identity, and invertibility. Now let's take a close look at each one. Group axiom one, closure. By closure, I mean that for any elements A and B in G, their sum is not only defined, but is also in G. Example, consider the set of natural numbers n, which are the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. n is for natural, by the way. These are sometimes referred to as the positive integers. Are the natural numbers closed under regular addition? Yes, they are. If I add any two natural numbers together, I'll get another natural number. Group axiom 2, associativity. By associativity, I mean that for any A, B, and C in G, A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C. In other words, as long as you don't reorder the terms, the order in which you sum is irrelevant. Example, consider the set of rational numbers Q. Q for quotient, by the way. This is the set of all real numbers that can be written as a fraction. In other words, they can be expressed as a ratio of an integer numerator and non-zero integer denominator. Is Q associative under regular addition? Yes, it is, and this will be shown when we prove that Q is a group under addition. Axiom 3, Identity. By identity, I mean there exists some element E of G, such that for any A in G, we have E plus A equals A plus E equals A. Example, the whole numbers consists of all natural numbers with zero included. In other words, zero, one, two, three, etc. Do the whole numbers have an identity under regular addition? Yes, they do. The identity is zero. Any whole number plus zero is equal to itself. Axiom four, invertibility. By invertibility, I mean that for any A in G, there exists a B in G such that A plus B equals B plus A equals zero. And we usually write B as negative A when the group operation is addition, and we write B as A to the minus one when the group operation is multiplication. Example, consider the set of integers z. z is for Zollen, which is German for a number, by the way. These are the positive and negative whole numbers. Does every integer have an additive inverse? Yes. Zero is its own inverse, and the inverse of any positive integer is its corresponding negative, and vice versa. Now let's take a look at the set n of natural numbers. Now we've already shown that n has closure under regular addition. So does it satisfy associativity? Yes. If I add any three natural numbers together, the order in which I add them doesn't matter. So we're looking good so far. Do the natural numbers satisfy identity? Well, the additive identity zero is not a natural number, so it doesn't. But we can fix that. By adding zero and creating the whole numbers or non-negative integers, we now satisfy the identity axiom. And lastly, does our new set of whole numbers satisfy invertibility? No. None of the positive integers has an additive inverse in the whole numbers. 
So to satisfy invertibility, we would need to add in all the negative integers as well. So what did we just do? Well, we just created z, which is a group under regular addition and the smallest group that contains the natural numbers. Now, as we promised, we're going to show that the set of rational numbers q is a group under regular addition. To do this, we will need to show that q plus satisfies all four of our group axioms. Axiom 1, closure. Let's take two rational numbers, x, which we will express as a over b, and y, which we will express as c over d, where b and d are, of course, non-zero. When we make a common denominator and add them together, we get x plus y equals a over b plus c over d, which equals ad plus bc over bd, which is a rational number since it is the ratio of integers and has a non-zero denominator. So we do have closure. That was actually the hard part. The rest of the axioms follow easily. Q inherits associativity from the integers. It has an additive identity, namely zero. And lastly, any positive rational number has an additive inverse, namely it's negative and vice versa. So far, I've only provided examples of additive groups. So let's examine a multiplicative group. The set QX is notation for the rational numbers minus zero. In fact, you could use this X notation for any set minus its additive identity, but it's most commonly used for Q and R. I claim that QX is a group under regular multiplication. To show this, let's first look at closure. Let X be a rational number A over B and Y be the rational number C over D then x times y is ac over bd. Now since qx does not contain zero, I know that neither x nor y can be zero, which means that neither a or c can be zero. So their product, ac, must also be non-zero. Also, since b and d are both non-zero by definition of rational number, I know that bd is also non-zero. Therefore, x times y can be expressed as the ratio of two non-zero integers, and so it's in our set QX. So we do have closure. The next two axioms follow swiftly. Uh, associativity is inherited from the integers and the multiplicative identity here is one. And finally, to show invertibility, take any rational number X expressed as A over B. Now we've already shown that A and B are both non-zero. Hence the multiplicative inverse B over A exists and is non-zero, and so it is in our set QX. So we have shown that QX is a group under regular multiplication. The reason I bring these two groups up is that Q forms a field under regular addition and multiplication, and this will actually be the topic of my next video. Group theory is a rich area of study, and unfortunately I've only just scratched the surface here. I do hope to do a lot more videos on the different types of groups and group structures. If you are interested in reading more about this topic, I highly recommend the book Group Theory by Dr. W.R. Scott. Uh, I first read this book as an undergraduate, and I really enjoyed it. That's it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for me uh, for future videos, please leave me a comment.